Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. One of the, the stories that was shared on the papers this morning, I think on the Daily Independent, was, uh, uh, of course, uh, Bola Metinubu speaking about him back in the country and, of course, being hale and hearty. And um, uh, the governor of Lagos State, Baba Jide Song Wolu, um, you know, also supporting, you know, and doing what was, you know, possible to, of course, uh, welcome the former governor back into the state as the build up to the 2023 elections, um, you know, runs faster. But at the same time, there was also on the Daily Independent a story on the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, and it says here, Oshimbajo on a coalition course with Tinubu pushes to succeed Buhari. Um, we're speaking this morning with, once again, Mark Adebayo and Ms. Anika Gule. Good morning to you both. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me once again. All right. Mr. Gule, good morning. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Thank morning you to for you, having me. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Gule this morning. Um, quickly, your views on the Southwest, you know, and its positioning, its strategizing towards 2023. Um, there have been criticism, you know, and of course, critics who have pointed out certain things that they either did well or did wrong in 2015 um, in bringing the current administration into power. Um, as they, of course, we get close to 2023, share your thoughts on the positioning and the strategies of the Southwest uh, with Bola Metinubu and Professor Yomi Shimbajo as rumored. Well, thank you very much. I think as a nation, we should move on. And whatever happened in 2015 is already water under the bridge. So it is uh, already spilled milk, and we cannot continue to dwell on it because it's history. What we need as a nation is how do we move forward? How do we get this country back on track? Because every analyst, if they are honest, will agree that all things are not well with Nigeria. So that will be my comment on what happened in 2015. For 2023, and the strategies that are forming all over the country, I would say that the Southwest region of Nigeria have a legitimate claim to the presidency in 2023. Because the Southwest of Nigeria it's an integral part of the Federation. And every citizen of Nigeria has, so long as they are qualified, uh, Nick Agule, can you hear us? All right, seems we may have lost him there. Mark Adebayo, can you hear me clearly? I'm hearing you. Okay, all right. Well, we'll try to reconnect with uh, Nika Gule. Um, Akadebaya, I want you to go on with that same question. Um, the Southwest and its positioning um, uh, towards 2023. All right, seems we may have lost uh, both our guests, you know, and of course, as we try to. No, I'm back. Okay. I'm back. Okay, uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. Adebayo. No, no, I didn't hear your question, actually. Oh, I was asking that you go on with the same question. You know, the Southwest and its position in towards 2023, it seems there might okay, be a clash of political heads um, as, uh, you know, we draw closer to the elections. All right. Um, still, of course, uh, uh, Mr. Agule, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry. All right. Welcome back. To went on. All right. Quickly, go uh, ahead. Hello? Yeah. Mr. Agule, go ahead. Ms. Uh, Mr. Debai, kindly hold on. Nick Agule, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I go was ahead, about please. to say that Professor Yemi Osimbajo, the Vice President of Nigeria, as the Americans will say, is a heartbeat away from the presidency. So he is not only just qualified, given that he has functioned in that office for six years, running into seven, 
but he's a citizen of Nigeria. Now, whatever is happening between him and his political godfather, uh, Mr. Ahmed Tinubu, is what politicians will always do. There's always jostling for power. And we're going to continue to see these games in the run-up to the 2023 elections. At the end of the day, what should happen is that the internal democracy of the APC as a party, the internal democracy of APC as a party, voted by a majority of members of that party, of the APC, to stand. So for us as citizens who have our voters' cards and are waiting to vote, we want the parties, especially the two major parties, to present to us credible and viable candidates that we emerge from an internal party democracy that assures that people's wishes, that is members of the party, the APC, that their wishes are respected by the party and the candidate that is presented is the one that is agreeable to a majority of the party members. All right. Uh, Mark Adebayo, That's my view. Ma Mark Adebayo, let me, let me bring you in here uh, you know, to share your thoughts on the yeah. possibility of a, you know, is there a difference between the Southwest um, APC and the presidency APC, if, if, if you understand what I mean? The, I do. I do. Uh, so go ahead. Uh, let, let's get your thoughts on that one. You know, is, is there those possibilities of, you know, two different lines? Um, well, uh, let me first and foremost let me just say that let me intervene by saying that uh, it is not this issue between uh, Ashwa Jubala Metinubu and Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju. It's not a southwest strategy. It is an individual thing. It is their own individual, uh, you know. You know, ambition to become the president of Nigeria. It has nothing to do with the collectivity of the of the Southwest. So it is the, it is individuals who are jostling for power. And you know, um, it is uh, as a matter of fact, it is it is a counter strategy against the Southwest. If the Southwest is really serious and desirous of uh, producing the next president, we shouldn't be having this type of uh, clashes coming on. So it is a counter strategy. In, 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 for, for the Southwest as a whole. It's, so what is happening is individuals jostling for power to position themselves uh, to become uh, president in 2023. Uh, but you see, my main concern, my major concern is that the fact, the mere fact that we are having this conversation is an indictment on the organizational capacity or lack of it of the, of the Nigerian youth. Where are, they not, where are we having this conversation between these two juggernauts? Why are we not talking about a new face, a younger person who is used organizing for presidency? Now, 70 million Nigerian youth, you know, where, where are they in this? Where, where are they in this conversation? Where are they not too young to run uh, advocates and activists? Well, we shouldn't be, uh, because it is an indictment of the younger generation that we are discussing these two people. We, we should be discussing a new face. We should be uh, discussing somebody who's going to give us a new vision, a younger, a younger person on, on, on the block who is changing the narratives from the current trajectory of tragedy to a better Nigeria. We shouldn't be having this conversation. Now, I believe very sincerely that, that the two people have legitimate constitutional rights to aspire to become the president of Nigeria. But I, I want to believe that Bola Medinobu has given his due. I, I, I sincerely believe that, that he has given his due. I, 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 I don't want a, a situation where but it, it would have been better for him to remain as a kingmaker. I, that is without, without uh, contending with his right to, go, to, to, to aspire to become presidency, to, to become the president. Professor Yemi Shibaju, I, I believe he has also given his, uh, uh, paid his due. But we, we need a different narrative. This is where the Nigerian youth must organize. And do not, we should not be having this conversation. And then we should not. Where I disagree with Mr. Agule is that um, for him calling on the two so-called uh, major parties to, to, to give us. No, 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 no. I think we have seen what they can do. We, we have seen 
what they cannot do. We have seen their lack of capacity. We have seen their lack of patriotism. We have seen their lack of vision for a Nigeria that is progressive, that is developed and advancing. We have seen that. We need a new organization. We need a new party. We need new people, new faces to, to, to join the fray. You know, we cannot say that we want to move forward while we keep looking backwards. We cannot move forward like that. It is, it's a recipe for, for crashing. I'm seizing this opportunity to call on the, the Nigerian, the younger Nigerian generation, that this is time for you to change the narrative. It is not enough to right. get a law passed, and then you go back and, and sit back. Are we saying that there are no young people in their 40s, in their 50s, who can come together, organize and produce a candidate? You know, no, we are taking up the challenges. That is why we say we are telling INEC we need to register new organizations, new political parties that can give a fight to these juggernauts in 2023. We need to share the narrative. And we, we cannot share the narrative if we do not remodel our leadership recruitment processes in this country. We need younger people with younger vision, with younger power, with younger energy to, to, run, to run their affairs. We should not be having conversation. You know, Franz Fanon said that we should not be, become victims of a circle of certainty. We must, we, we must resist the temptation to remain victims of a circle of certainty that we cannot go beyond that. No. All right, Mr. Adebayo. Uh, Nick Aguli, I'm bringing you back in. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure that you would also like to talk about the possibilities of a new face, a new force, you know, if there's enough time for that to even be achieved. Um, seeing the way that Nigerian politics truly is played and, you know, looking at it at the grassroots level, the amount of information that needs to be spread, the amount of publicity that needs to be done in the next one year, it, it might be almost impossible. Um, but I, I, I want you to, you know, share once again on the Vice President and Bolamed Tinubu. And, and also keep in mind, I, would, I think it's important that I say this, that there has not been an actual, um, you know, declaration of either of these two persons to run um, or, you know, that they both are, you know, fighting each other, you know, for who would eventually take that seat. These are really just media narratives that are springing up here and there that we're analyzing. Um, so, Mr. Agule, um, for the vice president, you know, what would you tell of him if he decides that he will go ahead and, you know, seek the ticket against Bola Metinubu? Thank you very much. Before I answer your question, I just want to add to what uh, my co-panelist, Mr. Adebayo, has said. I am all for a third force. I am all for a fresh face on the scene. But these things can't happen. They can't just happen like that. There has to be a, 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 a force, a movement that takes that to happen. So uh, 2023 is not too far off. Do we have that movement? I think at this point, we should first and foremost be mobilizing people to first and foremost get their voters' cards. Because it is when they register and have voters' cards that we'll be able to mobilize them to even stand behind the third force in 2023. Now, to answer your question, in my own personal opinion, I believe that the Vice President, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, is ably qualified to vie for the position of the President of Nigeria. Why? Because there has been moments when the president had to travel overseas for medical attention, and the Professor Osibajo had the opportunity to act as president. And we saw within the time that he acted as president, uh, great shoots of uh, things happening, good things happening at the federal level in our governance. And so I believe that he has the capacity to do it. He, he, may, he may probably not be fully exercising his capacity and competence at this, uh, at this time because he's only a vice president and he can only act based on what the president uh, is delegating to him. But those moments that he had to act as president, I think he acted with courage, especially... Uh, he, he sacked, uh, I think uh, there was a national security advisor. Or DSS. Was it, uh, uh, DSS, the head of DSS, DSS, DSS at that time. The yes. director of DSS that organized, orchestrated the attack on the legislative arm of government. He had the courage to sack him, something that is very rare in this government. You know, so I, I, I would definitely uh, support that he. To vie for the position of president. 
I also agree with uh, my co-panelist, Mr. Adebayo, to say that um, for uh, uh, Bola Hamid, you know, I mean, he has capacity. As Lagos State Governor, we saw that he did good things. But the position of the president of Nigeria is a very busy position. You see, the president of Nigeria is the busiest president in the whole world. You know why? The president of Nigeria is even running secondary schools. Secondary schools. He's running railways. He's running water. Running electricity. Running all these things. The president of America doesn't run those things. The UK prime minister doesn't run those things. They only look at the big things, foreign policy, defense, all of that. So the president of Nigeria needs to be someone who is agile, someone who has energy, someone who can put in 24 hours work in a day. And Mr. Tinubu it looks to be someone in failing health. And honestly, I mean, like Mr. Adebayo said, for his own good, good health and for his own longevity, he should probably just step aside into an advisory right. role. Right, because if he, even that he hasn't taken the position, he's in and out of uh, medical facilities. How about if he now takes the whole stress of the presidency and puts on his head? He may probably not live that long anymore. All right, Mr. Gule. Finally, um, in one minute, Mark Adebayo, um, quickly show your thoughts on you know, some of the things that you were you're talking about earlier, the you know, third force, your new face. Um, do you think, do you yeah, honestly yeah. believe that that is really achievable um, in the, the, the next one year? Yeah, there's a will, there's a way. Now, uh, Mr. Abule, you know, the president of Nigeria also runs cattle because uh, he runs cattle, he looks for cattle roads. So, just to add to, to, to the job description of the, of the Nigeria president. Yes, it is possible, it is doable. Yeah, there's a will, there's a way. For instance, uh, uh, maybe you have heard about OP, our party. That is a, an organization being put together by young people, professionals, and activists uh, uh, all over the country who have submitted application to INEC for registration as the political party. And I think uh, Nigeria should key into that. It's one of it is doable. If the regional comes out in good time, they can make a difference. It takes just six months of uh, serious organizing. For, 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 for that to happen. The third force can happen. And OP is one of the of those of the third forces. And I'm going to reach out to Mr. Abule on this later. So um, I think it is possible. I don't think we should start from the premise of pessimism. We, the young people of this country must come, come together, join forces with well-meaning older generations to be able to bring the necessary uh, change to this country. What we need is a peaceful, social, political uh, revolution that is going to take Nigeria to, uh, to the status of an advanced society. Like UAE has done, it doesn't take too much, uh, it's not rocket science to be able to make a country develop. Just remove corruption, remove nepotism, remove uh, intrusive, uh, you know, thinking, and then you'll be able to move forward as a country. A third force is possible. There are other options uh, available over there that, that uh, in the country that people are coming together and organizing. All we need to do is that we must change the momentum let us share the momentum from the backward generation to the forward-moving generation, to the forward-looking generation, so that Nigeria can move forward. All right. We must not limit our conversation to PDP and APC. They have expired. We must not limit our conversation to the older generations. We must be able to bring people on board who mean well for this country and who can move the country Absolutely. Uh, forward. Um, Mark Adebayo, thank you once again for joining us on uh, The Breakfast and in our conversations this morning. Uh, we wish you a very beautiful week ahead. Looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, Mr. Nika Gule, always interesting speaking with you also. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, have a great, great week ahead. Thank you, Ganesh. You guys are doing an awesome job. Keep, up, keep at it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And that is where we will be wrapping up the conversations this morning on The Breakfast. If you missed out on any of it, remember where to catch up. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. See what our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gye Obama. See you tomorrow.